Hey, Celebration Women, welcome to our series of Table Talks, where we're learning and growing together to become godly and strong women. This is for women from all walks and stages of life. So pull up a chair because there's a seat here with your name on it. Hey, everybody, welcome back to part three of our Keep Growing Table Talks. So today we're on episode three, and we've had a great time. Last week we had a great time talking about the topic of friendship. And this week we're going to continue on in that topic, but specifically... We're going to talk about barriers in friendship. And so I've got my daughters-in-law with me again, Jess and Alicia, and we're going to talk all about those barriers to friendship. And this is such a huge topic for me. This is such a passion topic, is the topic of friendship. Because for me, when I was a new Christian, I lived in a big apartment with a bunch of Christian roommates. We are trying to save money, so there was a lot of us. And we had all these roommates, and we had all these late-night talks, and it was just we just grew so close in friendship. And then... They became part of our church in Vancouver, and so these friendships were deep and long-lasting. But then I moved to Edmonton, and I really felt lost because all those friendships were back in Vancouver. I'd known some of these women since university, and so I was really alone when I came to Edmonton, and I really needed a friend. So what I did is I just prayed for a Christian friend. I prayed that God would provide for me because I was so lonely, and I just needed that support. So I just prayed that God would give me a Christian friend. And God just did over and above. He gave me some great Christian pastor friends, plus friends in all different areas of life. God just really went over and above. So it's been such a blessing in my life. And so I want to talk about that again today. And I really believe God wants to do that for everybody else as well. But one of the issues that we have is that there's barriers to women having friendships. And so let's talk about some of those barriers, some of those things that really keep us from having great friends. So A scripture I got was 1 Corinthians 13. And I know a lot of times 1 Corinthians 13, we think about that as a wedding thing. We hear it at all the weddings. But when I was reading it, I realized it really talks, it could just be a friendship chapter as well. And so I want to read 1 Corinthians 13 in terms of friendship instead. So I read it in all different translations. So you're going to get lots of different ways of saying some of these same words. But let's read it first in the Passion Translation. It says, love is large, or we could say friendship is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's own achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Now let's look at this whole thing again, but instead of the word love, like we hear in weddings, let's insert the word friendship where the word love is. So the first one is friendship is large and incredibly patient. Friendship is gentle and consistently kind. So I want to talk about that first one. You know, kindness, it says it's consistently kind. I know me, I know all of us, we have those sweet moments when we feel really kind and very sweet and we do these kind things. But that scripture is kind of convicting because it says consistently kind. So there's times where we're busy, we're at the grocery store, we're in a hurry. It's hard to be consistently kind or when we're not feeling great or just we've got a lot in our mind. But it says that love is consistently kind or friendship is consistently kind. And then it says friendship is not jealous. Um, you know, and it refuses to be jealous. Another, another way it says it, it refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. So I like that, that whole line. Friendship refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to somebody else. And I know for me, you know, there's, there's that temptation to be jealous. And how this happened to me a long time ago and just how one of the ways to come overcome jealousy. So um, I had, this is way back in the day. This is back in the 80s when, I know this is dating me, but when microwaves were a new thing, <laughs> believe it or not. And I was, we, I was on staff with the church and there was another couple that were similar age to us that were on staff at the church. We were all friends and I really wanted to have a, a microwave. And so I just, but I felt God really challenged me to pray for her to have a microwave. I mean, the first thing that comes in my heart is jealousy. Like there's no way I want her to have a microwave before I get a microwave. And, but I felt God just say, no, if you know, you need to pray for her. So I overcame that jealousy. And it's interesting when you pray for somebody, how it changes your heart towards yeah. them. So I prayed for her to get a microwave before, you know, to pray for her to get a microwave. And lo and behold, she ended up getting a microwave, you know, really quickly right afterwards before I got my microwave. 
But you know, it just did something in my heart. Praying for her did something in my heart. And then the long story short, I got a microwave. I think I got a nicer one than her afterwards. But, but just praying for somebody, you know, just getting out of that jealousy, God's going to challenge that jealousy out of you. So the other thing about jealousy is if you ever hear yourself use the term must be nice, that's a jealous, that can be jealous. And we have to be so careful when we say that must be nice to have that house. That must be nice to have that car because you don't know the true story. Right. You don't know why somebody has what they have. Maybe they had an inheritance. Who knows? I know for I have a friend who has a really nice big house. But the story behind that is her husband gave up a career in the medical field to be a pastor. And God just has a way of making things up like that to people. So you don't know if they worked hard for it. They got an inheritance. You really don't know their story. So be super careful to not do the must be nice and be jealous. And then verse five, it says, friendship is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. So that's a big one we want to talk about. Um, The barrier to friendship is being touchy or being dramatic. Mm -hmm. And in the Amplified, it says it this way. It says, Friendship is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a wrong suffered. It's not touchy or fretful or resentful. You know, for women, I think one of the things about us, our strength is our sensitivity. I mean, that's a great thing. You know, we notice things before maybe our guys don't. I know I'll notice when, you know, something's going on with somebody's life or the kids that we're just super sensitive. But that strength can also be a weakness when we're overly sensitive and we use that in our friendships. And I really noticed this with having different grandkids. You know, I had all boys. So this is a completely new thing, you know, seeing little girls and how they interact. So with the boys, the great thing about boys is when they have a fight or disagreement, they whack each other in the head and they're mad for a second. They talk about it and they're done. And five minutes later, they're having a great time and they're playing together. So they get over things so quickly. But what I've seen with watching the girls is they're very sensitive. So if they have a disagreement, someone did something they didn't think it was a a good idea or they didn't let them play with something, all of a sudden I'll be on the couch and a little girl will come over and fold her arms and pout. And so, you know, it's like, what's going on? You have to draw them out. And it's like, she wouldn't play with me or she said this or that. And they're just so sensitive between each other. And then you have to draw them out. And, you know, it takes a lot of time. That's one thing I noticed with the girls. It's like, I'm like, you know, you've only got this whole PED day to play together and you're going to waste half an hour pouting on the couch. So we just have to watch that as women, that we're not being sensitive, it just wastes so much time when we don't talk to each other and we've got this stuff between us because we don't talk it out. So be super careful with that. Um, It's just not to be overly sensitive. That's one of our weaknesses. And then I I think, Leisha, you were going to talk about that too, that, you know, the other thing we talked about talking things out is making sure that we deal with things quickly, learn how to talk things out because with relationships, there's two sides to every story. Yeah. And I have a specific situation. So there's misconceptions because there's different perspectives and there's different viewpoints and there's dis- different perceptions from each viewpoint. And there's always two sides to each story. So I have my th- side, the other person has their side. And so when you don't talk about something, it can actually brew and you can have this story of what happened in your, your head and you think this is fact because this is what I think happened or what I felt happened. And until there's an honest conversation, and hopefully sooner rather than later, there's two sides and they're just brewing. You don't get to have that clarification about what happened on both sides or the feelings on both sides. And suddenly healing can take place because you're actually talking about it and having a conversation. And I've even made assumptions about people and have regretted it. And you don't find out until you talk. And I have found out that I'm wrong based off of what I thought because of what I heard. So if there's gossip or what I was told and those situations are very tough because you don't have a clear picture and you think you do because you think it's fact. It's what I think happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important to get those things cleared up. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's really important to talk about things quickly. Not we just have this tendency to let things go on and on for a long time. It just gets worse. So I found that it's really, really helpful, really healthy to talk about things quickly. 
Um, so I know something that happened to me a long time ago is, you know, I'm sure my kids were kind of bratty when they were little, running around church kids. And um, something happened one day in kids' church, and one of the leaders came up to me and said, your rotten kids did this. And I was a little taken aback by that. And, you know, in the moments like, uh, she just called my kids rotten, you know, like this big statement, you know, because something happened. And then, but I didn't say anything in the moment. I went home and I was like, that was a huge thing that she just said to me, you've got rotten kids. And so what I did is immediately I called her up. I immediately called her up and just said, hey, you know what? You just called my kids rotten kids today. But the wonderful thing was, is that immediately she apologized. She must have been thinking about it too. And she immediately said, I'm so sorry. That's not what I meant. I was frustrated in the moment. Your kids are not rotten kids, <laughs> you know? And we were able to clear it up so easily just by being quick to clear up the situation and talk about it. So that's super important is to talk about things quickly. Verse five, it says, friendship is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. So we have to choose sometimes just to shake it off and not take offense by things. And we can just be like as women, that's just something we can just so easily pick up offense about little things. So years ago, we had a female worship leader. She was more quiet and she was more focused. And I remember a woman came to me and said, you know, that worship leader, she is such a snob. She walked by me today and didn't say hi. And I know the truth, she wasn't like that. She was a nice person, but I know she was a focused person as well. She probably didn't even notice that person at the time. And this woman judged her and said, she's stuck up. And I know that's not the truth. But the real truth was that this person was, first of all, being touchy, but second of all, she was quite an insecure person. So she read someone walking by her as being stuck up. So. I think insecurity can be a big problem in friendship. And yeah. Jess, you've noticed that as well? Oh, 100%. Insecurity can be such a robber of friendships. And, you know, one thing that I've really tried to do for my own friendships is just to be okay and be happy with who I am and what I can bring to the relationship. Because otherwise, if all you do is question other people's motives or... Um, think only about the negative parts of yourself or what you don't like wish you were or all the things that you aren't, it really undermines the relationship and it makes it really hard for people to be close to you. I mean, I have friends who text quite inexpressively, mm -hmm. quite bluntly often, mm -hmm. and it would be so easy for me to just take that personally and think they don't want to have anything to do with me or they don't care about the conversation or whatever. And I've realized that that's just their tone. It's just the way that they text. And now I don't read into it. I just, you know, can hear their voice talking back and forth with me. And just, I had to learn not to take that personally because that can be so easy, especially over text, I think. Oh yeah. I know, I know that's a big passion. Like Vince and I have said, don't, don't read into text. You yeah. can't really tell tone. No. And so often yeah. we just read into texts and in, in the wrong way. So yeah, let's not be touchy, especially about some of those little things. Um, a good phrase I heard a long time ago was someone say that people can have their feelings on their fingertips. So just being really careful, someone walks by you, doesn't say hi, their text is funny, they take too long to text, like all those yeah, sorts of yeah. things we can just read into them so easily. Yeah. We need to be super careful about that. So the next in the Passion Translation, it says, friendship does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. Friendship does not traffic in shame and disrespect. And what I read about that is a barrier to friendship is comparison. Bragging about one's own achievements is, or inflating one's own importance is kind of like, well, I would never do that, you know? And it's like a criticism, it's a comparison. I would never do that. Oh, I'm more thoughtful than that. Or my kids would never do that. We can be so quick to criticize and compare each other. So I would say that a ba another barrier to friendship is comparison. And I know, Alicia, you, you had wanted to talk about that as well. Yeah, comparison is super big, I feel like, for everyone. So I find comparison brings gaps every single time you do that. You could be close to someone, but each time that you compare yourself or be critical, it brings a gap between you and that friend, and it slowly brings more and more gaps to the relationship. Then it becomes critical thinking, and then it becomes negative thinking, and now you're all of a sudden against that person instead of with that person, and instead of being close with that person, now you're completely far and it brings, and the differences between you bring out your insecurity within your relationship. 
And from there, it's so difficult to have a healthy relationship. Where do you even go from there? And it's really hard to recover and kind of take that back. And sometimes mm -hmm. for the other person, it can bring trust issues in the relationship. Yeah, for sure. So comparison can be such a huge barrier to friendship, but also you mentioned criticism as well. We can got to be careful where we don't be critical and judgy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, don't write people off. Yeah. Don't give up on people. Um, I know one time I almost wrote somebody off. Well, I did write somebody off and I really learned from it. Um, a long time ago, I went on a bike trip and I met somebody there and we were cycling and I just found her kind of negative. I found her like she was just like a Debbie Downer, you know, the kind and just kind of a downer kind of personality. I she was complaining on the trip and I just thought I do not like this person. Um, and so sweet Christian that I am, uh, whenever I, she was whenever I was at a social event later on with her, if she was on one side of the room, I would I mean, I was nice about it, but I just go to the other side of the room. I avoided this person at all costs. I had just written her off. I decided that she was just not somebody I would want to get to know. But then, of course, we got put in another situation. We were on a bike trip together and it just happened. We were, you know, and I was as I knew we were going to be cycling together that day. I just felt God really challenged my heart. And he said, you know, reach out to her. And so I cycled alongside of her. I began to talk to her and I found out she was a really nice person. And we developed a great friendship from that day. I mean, she came to my birthday. I mean, she's become one of my great friends. She's actually a very sweet person, but I was critical in the moment. And you know, that first impression is such a dangerous thing with people. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we make these first impressions and we just like write people off. Yeah. So we gotta be very careful that we don't criticize people. We don't write them off. And then the message talks about this as well. The message sort of brings it together and it says, love or sorry friendship always looks for the best always looks for the best so another barrier to friendship is that fault finding with people mm -hmm. and just you know seeing the fault not seeing the good there would be so much more peace in of our of our lives if we just would look for the best in people yeah. and then it says friendship is not easily angered it doesn't fly off the handle and then it says friendship takes no account of the evil done for it pays no attention to a wrong suffered and the amplified so instead of holding grudges, let things go, shake things off, shake off these little things. Someone didn't respond to a text or they didn't say hi, because even, even our good friends are going to do stuff like that to us. So we've got to be willing to shake these things off. Mm -hmm. And then verse five, again, in the NIV, it says it differently. It says, friendship keeps no records of wrongs. And it's kind of like a ledger. You know, I think of accounting. I think that ledger this mental list that we keep in our heads, you know, she did this, she didn't text back, she did that, all those sorts of things that we can do. Um, Isaac would probably like this one, but in the message it says, love does not keep score or friendship does not keep score. So got a hockey game tonight. So it's like, that's not, it's not keeping score like a hockey game. I did this for you, you need to do that for me. I texted you, you need right. to text me back. I paid for this, you know, that kind of thing. Friendship does not keep that kind of score. So or it could be, you know, and the judging that we could do. I brought you a casserole. You didn't bring me a casserole. Um, you know, I would do this. Those unrealistic expectations can be such a barrier to friendship. And then the passion again, it says love or friendship will overlook offenses and remain focused on what is good. And that's what we were talking about before is not looking at the, the bad, but looking for the good. Because everybody has strengths. But when you've got a strength, there's always that flip side is the weakness of that right. person. Yeah. So if you're going to have good friendships, you have to begin to focus on the good. Mm -hmm. So lastly, one of the barriers to friendship or one of the considerations is just the seasons of life. And Jess, you had some thoughts about that. Yeah, I mean, I have found, especially right now in my life, that kind of a physical barrier to friendship has been having young kids and just being in this phase of life. And, you know, I'm so thankful to have friends who are in the same stage and they get it and they're doing the same things and they're, they're in the midst of it. Um, but it makes friendship different. You know, my friendships look so different than they did five years ago, 10 years ago, because I just don't have the same amount of time to put towards them or the bandwidth to even, you know, be as involved in their lives as I'd like to be. And so that can be hard. It can be hard to feel close to people when you can't give what you'd like to to a friendship. But I've sort of started to try and embrace that 
this is a season, as you said, it's the season of life. It's not going to be forever. And this one looks different than it has in the past, but that's not necessarily bad. It's just different. And so trying to learn from what we talked about last week and then what we talked about today, how to you know, incorporate that into what my friendships look like right now in this season of life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't give up. You know, it yeah. might be a season of life. Don't give up with that. Um, we want to believe for you to have great friendships as well. Mm -hmm. So we hope this helps today. Um, some of these thoughts about friendship, hopefully they'll really help you. Hopefully you'll have a great time discussing them amongst each other today. And thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening. We hope that you found it encouraging, uplifting, and helpful. We'd love to invite you to be a part of our Sunday services online, wherever you might be tuning in from. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you here next time.